Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Phases in Motion, the podcast that brings you the latest in entertainment, life situations, and everyday happenings. Today, we're talking August Alsina and Jada Pinkett Smith. Has it finally been confirmed and all of the rumors put to sleep around August and Jada's relationship? Let's talk about it, y'all. Let's talk about it. Alcina is, he has made headlines. And basically what we're hearing from August is that he, you know, first of all, that he's a very hurt individual. Like this relationship and him having to walk away from this relationship has caused him to be really devastated and put him in a really dark place, like to death. Oh. Also starts to block my heart. My heart space is blocked. I don't really have a choice but to express my truth. I actually sat down with Will and had a conversation due to the transformation from their marriage to life partnership that they've spoken on several times and it, you know, not involving romanticism. Mm -hmm. He gave me his blessing and I, I totally gave myself to that relationship for years of my life, you know, and I truly and really, really deeply loved and have a ton of love for her. Um, I, I devoted myself to it. I gave my full self to it. So much so to the point that I can die right now and be okay with knowing that I truly gave myself to somebody. Right, you did the right thing. And I really loved a person. I experienced that. I know what that, that feels like. And some people never get that in this lifetime. So I'm, I'm, I know that I'm completely blessed. And this conversation is, is difficult because it's so much that it would be hard for people to um, understand. But once it starts to affect me and my livelihood, I have to speak up about my truth and stand on my tin with anything that may come along with it. I just always stay silent because I never want to be a, the person to cause confusion because I love these people. Right. I really genuinely do. And I have literally never been in love in that kind of a way. So much so that being intertwined in that way, walking away from it, butchered me. Like I, I'm shaking right now because right. it it almost, it almost killed me. It pushed me into being another person, my newest self. It broke me down. It was a part of me being paralyzed, trying to pull myself apart from it. It probably will be the hardest thing that I've ever experienced in this lifetime. And it has caused him to be somebody different and Basically, the reasoning for him coming out like he's coming out, um, if you go back on all of his interviews and you look, just go back to 2015 today, you will hear how hurt this individual is. You standing over your sister's dead body and she was just here and alive. And then she's suddenly dead, right? And I remember standing over my sister and I was weeping, wailing. And I can remember my cousin kept pulling me off her saying, she gone, you gotta let her go. And little did she know I wasn't only weeping about my sister, I was mourning myself. I was grieving myself as I knew it because I died in that moment. Who I was, everything that I thought that I was, everything I thought I knew about myself, it died. And I couldn't be that human being any longer. I saw my sister die. She never got to live her full life. How her aug is and how the family dynamics has caused so much pain as far as losing his brother, then losing his sister right after that, and then gaining three beautiful nieces that he calls his kids now, his, his daughters now, and having a dysfunctional relationship with his mother. 
Um, he he said at one point that his mother didn't feel like a mo it didn't feel like a mother son relationship. It felt like just he was somebody in the street, just somebody else other than a son and her being a mother. However, before I move on, I do want to say that he did give his mom's props. It is, she is his queen. Um, he is thankful for her. He loves her and will always love her. She brought him life, you know, she birthed him. So he did say that, but just his family dynamics was horrible. And then on top of that, he became really, really sick, like ill and blind in one eye, couldn't walk, couldn't talk. And he had to learn to do those things all over again. And in the interim, they were giving him pain meds, which he then became addicted to Percocets. Um, and so then Jada comes into the picture at that point and, you know, kind of steered him and guided him through like a mentor in the beginning and um, helped him to, you know, love himself, teach, teaching him to love himself helping him to love others better and treat others better. But in that, in that mentorship, it seems that a relationship was built intimately. And it was, this was in the time where uh, Will and Jada were saying, okay, we're going from a marriage to a lifelong partnership. And you will hear Will saying that uh, in an interview that it doesn't matter what Jada does. She can do anything on this earth. I don't care what it is. It's not going to come in between or break the lifelong partnership that they have. Jada also in her interview talked about this lifelong partnership and even said that, um, Will said, um, if you're going to do something, you're going to have to do it way on the other side of the house in another room. I don't care what it is, but you're not leaving. This is a partnership, you know? So they've always, they've, you know, for the, for some years have been talking about how their, the dynamics of their marriage has changed. Um, you know, it had been rumored earlier that Og was in a relationship with their daughter. And if then it finally came out that it was Jada that he was in a relationship with. Anyway, he fell deeply in love with Jada. He said he gave his all like he had. He finally found love and, and he knows what love feels like. And I was listening to another blogger and they were talking about how, gosh, he's so young. But he felt that kind of love, like that old school love. And like my thoughts was it only could come from Jada. You know, she's way older than him. Um, and so, but yeah, but he's broken and he's broken at such a young age. And when he talks in his interviews, like he's not really interested in a relationship. What is disturbing is that he talks about that his room is painted black and that his curtains are black and that he wears black and that everything is black around him. He talked about that in the breakfast club in 2015, I believe. But then I heard an interview. I think it was even in his documentary where documentary, you guys got to go see the documentary too. I think it's like five parts, four parts, something like that, but it's very good more. It may be more than that, but the documentary is very good. Most of his time is spent in his room. Like, and it's, and it's in those moments that he has his deepest thoughts. He's a deep thinker. And it's in that moment that he has his deepest thoughts and he fig tries to figure out what's next for him and what's next to make him a better person. He also talks about even 2015 and even in 2020 today, how he doesn't want to cross people. He doesn't want to be in any drama. He's not that kind of person. I want to be the person to cause any confusion or step on, on toes. I want to honor myself and I want to honor my authenticity. And if honoring my authenticity means you hate me, stone me, shoot me, crucify me, whatever. Bury me an honest man. And he just wants to love everyone. He doesn't even really look at his celebrity. Um, he says people think that when you become a celebrity that it's all you know, glitz and glamour and it's all fun and cute. But really at the end of the day, coming from the dirt, coming from the trenches, coming from the hood, coming from poverty um, to having whatever you want is really nerve wracking. Like it could really be bad. Like it breaks relationships, even in families. He had a family member that came out and talked to him about and talked about him and was like, I'm going to expose you and you're gay, all this stuff. Um, and he was like, but I never said anything about how you molested me and how I asked my mother not to tell anybody, let's just sweep it on the rug. I still love you anyway, but you hurt me. Then turn around and said, ask my mom not to tell anybody. And the next day people say, your mama said, you know, so he's been hurt a lot and, and a lot by family. Well, here's the, here's the question. 
people say that Jada came into his life. Well, let's back up because Og said it's the entire family supports him. Like they are good people. He loved them. He has lots of love for all of them, right? But we're talking about him and Jada. Jada comes in his life when he's very vulnerable. He's addicted to Percocet. And she's kind of this mentor. And then, you know, obviously they're spending time together. And it turns into this, I believe, Aug, that it turns into this relationship. And he falls in love with her. And she has she has feelings for him. He came out and he wrote this long thing, I think on her birthday, about her that a husband would write. Like, it was very sweet stuff that you want to hear from your husband. And But she's come out and she's written really nice things about how that she love, have love for him in in statements but anyway they fall in love obviously and they're doing these things but but my my scenario my take my just my opinion and how i'm reading into this because i immediately start doing investigation and looking into this right but how i see it is that jada is with she's a married woman um and she's a high profile celebrity so is her husband and so if we're going to do this, we got to keep it under wraps, which is why I think Aug was being really careful about how he did state it with the interview with Angela Yee. But we got to keep this under wraps. You know, I can't have this kind of mess um, with my, my family and in the tabloids and the media about what's going on with us. Even though it's been rumored that we're doing this stuff, you just stick to your story. I stick to mine. It's not happening. But know that I love you. We can still do this long as it's just kept under wraps. Well, I don't think Og came, Og came out and was just telling on Jada or just, just revealing Jada, just outing her. I'm thinking Og is telling his truth. He did the documentary. He's getting it all out. It's a part of his healing from him getting off drugs, from him healing from the death of his siblings, from his, his relationship healing with his mother, uh, and for him wanting to be genuine, genuine to himself and be himself that he gave this information out. And he was really careful about how he did it, but he basically let the world know that, yeah, this is true, and, and Will approved it. So um, the big thing, though, here is, Will Jada come to the red table and talk about it? Because that's what all of us are waiting for. Like all the bloggers, all the media, we're waiting for you, Jada, to come out and come to that red table and, and spill it. Because you said the red table is where you can let it all out, where your truth comes out. You can heal from it. Because when you tell your truth, that's when you begin to heal and you can help others heal. So Jada, you coming out or what? Now, Jada did come out on social media and was saying that, it's time for some healing, you know, and whatever else. So that made us think that she's going to come to the red table. So you guys, Fridays is usually when the new stuff come out on the red table. So look for that Friday because I'm going to be looking for it and I'm going to report on it. But I'm anxious to see, Jada, are you going to come out and are you going to just be totally honest and tell the truth about this relationship? Or are there going to be all kind of excuses for why you are not going to tell the truth? That's all we want to know. Don't get it twisted. I like Jada. Um, I, 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 I like her a lot. And I think that she is a beautiful woman. I just want her to come to the red table and talk about it and tell her truth. Just like August. Don't be mad at him for telling his truth, but it was something he said that he was like, I probably would have took this to my grave, but so what's the, but what has happened that, you know, now it's coming out. But I just think that he wanted to be totally honest about his whole life. And since she's a part of his life, he had to tell that side of the story so anyway you guys i'm gonna end right here but i want to know what you guys think leave your comments below um let me know what you're thinking and then um, i'm gonna be watching out for the red table to see whatever jada has i'm gonna be watching social media and everything just to see what jada has to say about it are they just living a whole lie or do they have to keep things personal because of who they are they're celebrities like they don't intend to lie but they can't come out and tell things or what's the deal? You know, we heard they were swingers. We heard that Will had a relationship with Tisha Campbell's um, husband, who's soon to be her ex-husband. Is Tisha trying to tell us that that's true too? Like, the Smiths are catching it lately, and we want to see what the outcome is. We want to we want to know what the T is. So, um, anyway, that's what's going on with Will, Jada, and August Alcina. Um, I'm be excited to bring you um, the updated information. So, I'm ready to get out of here. But in the meantime, take care of yourselves. Respect yourself. Respect others. I'm out.